Okay, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. This is Barbara Muller. Barbara has grown up with pedigree dogs, getting her own Cocker Spaniel in 1970, Old English Sheepdogs in the 1980s, and later in the 1990s, BBGV, having bred many champions, international champions, and world and European winners with her homebred dogs. She started judging in 1980 and became an FCI all-rounder judge in 2011. A member of the Swiss Kennel Club board, she was previously the president of the FCI Show and Judges Commission, as well as being vice president of the FCI European section for many years. Barbara was elected onto the FCI General Committee in 2019 and serves on the executive board as treasurer. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming back with some regulations. I'm very sorry, but uh, this, it's my day today. For reg um, it's, I'm, I'm good for regulation, I have heard. The docking ban uh, in Switzerland since uh, 1981 started it uh, for tails in 1997. Uh, the ban of ten do uh, dangerous breeds uh, is in Denmark. Breeding ban for English Bulldogs and Cavalier King Charles dogs in Norway. Ban of shaving uh, vibrisses in Germany and Austria. This is the way they look now, or they have to look now. Ban of showing hairless dogs in various European countries. Veterinary check for inherited uh, health problems, including loss of teeth, before the dogs are uh, allowed to enter the showground. And uh, in Germany and in Austria, they have to bring a lot of certificates from healthy dogs that the dog has not got this or this or this kind of illness. It's a money-making machine for veterinarian. I'm sorry to say my husband is a veterinarian, so I live from it, but it is really very special. Veterinarian checks before the dogs are permitted to enter the main ring after being awarded BOB. I have been in Dortmund three weeks, yes, three weeks ago, and uh, uh, I was allowed to judge the best veteran of the show ground, of the show. And before these veterans, which start to be veteran with eight years, were allowed to go into the main ring, they were checked by two veterinarians if they have a complete bite, if they have a correct bite. And when I asked these uh, two vets, uh, why do you check uh, the teeth in a veteran? They are not good for breeding anymore. Maybe a male, yes, a male would be uh, if the sperms are good, but a female is not allowed to have uh, puppies after eight years. And they told me, this is the regulation now. This is the law now and we follow the law. So there was no reason to check for the, uh, the veterinarian to check the mouse, but it is a law, and law has to be followed. These uh, headlines are endless, and no country is safe from further restrictions. All the bans that have been imposed in different parts of Europe today can become valid in Asia or South America tomorrow or the day after and vice versa. Everything what we have in Europe will come one day to Mexico. It's a question of time. And whatever you have, we will get maybe a bit quicker because uh, Europe wants to follow everything, but you, we will get it. How can we, as responsible breeders, judges, exhibitors, organizers, and last but not least, dog lovers, deal with these bans? And what can we do about them, apart from getting upset, 
with authorities and animal welfare organization. I mean not animal welfare organization, I mean more the activist. The, the organization have a good right to be here, but uh, the activists are the ones who give the problems, at least in my opinion. The international dog shows and the dog shows in every country are the showcase of the chronological world. But there are things, at least in my opinion, we should improve in the interest of healthy dogs and, least, and at least, uh, or as well, for our own uh, feeling. So, as we heard before, the judges are the ones who have the power in some points. They create uh, champions and champions are used for breeding. So let's start with the judges. When you read the uh, FCI basic statement for show judges, there it is written, dogs fit for their own for their original function. They have to be fit for function. This task of a show judge is to help preserve the inner and outer characteristics of each breed, which is approved breed standard within. Uh, in other words, the judge's main task is to judge and evaluate dogs according to the breed standard and to consider them as potential breeding dogs for for further generation. This must never be done in a detriment of the farewell and well-being of the dog. Dogs must always be fit for function, for which they were originally meant, developed and bred for. When you have seen uh, Wenke's presentation, that's exactly what it means. Dogs have to be fit for their own function, for their function they are bred for. That is the important thing. A just must particularly pay attention to the breed specific characteristics which have a tendency toward exaggeration, which can creep into a breed and have a negative effort, effect on the health of the individual dog. When you see this Mastino Napolitano, they look quite healthy. And this uh, picture you have seen on Monday, it is also a Mastino Napolitano. There is a big difference between a healthy dog and an unhealthy dog. The judge must be aware of the fact that the pedigree dog with accelerated breed characteristics which can lead and result in health, behavior, movement problems, should be excluded from breeding and therefore never, but really never be awarded the qualification excellent. Disharmony and construction. This is all from the judge's regulations. When standing or moving, the dog should be balanced. All dogs should be able to move without problems and every dog should show it sufficient when being judged. This is a nice Bernese mountain dog. It looks really balanced. And this is a picture uh, Yoshi Guy did 2020 from a, a Leonberger. This dog has been at a dog show and it should, it should not even come to the dog show. It's a, it's a poor dog. Breathing. All dogs should be able to breathe normally while standing and moving. Particular attention should be therefore be paid to exaggeration, which might prevent healthy breathing, such as very noisy breathing, 
very small and pinched nostrils or nostrils covered with skin. You have seen this picture as well. These are the noses, the nostrils we, are, we should look for. These can be accepted as Jane Ledlow told us. These are not acceptable. And we really should never forget that. This is a pug nose. And this is a pug nose which exists as well. So we have healthy dogs, but we have to look for them. Coming to teeth. The teeth of the dog should be developed according to the standard, particularly attention to the dogs with jaws and dental exaggeration as too narrow and weak underjaw. Inverted canine teeth, sometimes even going straight up to the gum. When you see this, this tooth is in the gum, and that means there will be a hole for the whole life if the uh, veterinaire doesn't do anything. And this is because the, oh, the under jaw is too small and then the, there's no space for the uh, teeth. These are eyes, but there's something wrong, sorry. Mm -hmm. yes. We are coming to eyes. All dogs should have bright and dry eyes with any, uh, without any sign of discomfort. Overly large or protruding eyes are, of course, not good. Eye rims too close and droppy eyelids. This actually is a sherry eye, but you can also see that the eyelid is very open. Inflammation or humid eyes, too small or too, too deep set eyes. We have healthy eye, eyes in dogs, lots of them, but we have to look for them. Skin, too loose. We have spoken today already about it. All dogs should have a healthy skin without any sign of discomfort, particularly attention to dogs with exaggeration that can cause irritation of the skin, such as too many skin folds and loose skin. This is a funny picture, but it is right. It was an advert in Germany. So that the nose, uh, the loose skin, so that the nose or eyes are covered with skin. T too much loose skin on body, limbs, and head. This owner must be very proud of this skin because I found the picture in Facebook with lots of comments how beautiful this dog is or this head is. Overweight. Lately there has been an increase of overweight dogs. Some dogs cannot move or have difficulties uh, to breathe. But fat is no substance. When you see that Labrador, then, and we see these kind of Labradors at dog shows, we all know. And this is the difference. So, we have to look for healthy dogs. 
as judges. We have, oh, coming to the next, temperament and behavior. All dogs should have good temperament in the ring as well as suitable for life at present society. They have to, dogs have to behave well. Otherwise, in, in, in our times now, uh, aggressive dogs, they, have an, they don't have an easy life because you cannot take them with you. You have to be careful. Uh, you, you are, when you have a family, it is dangerous. So dogs have to be, have to have a good temperament. But that doesn't mean that every dog needs the same temperament. When you have a Rottweiler, it's, it doesn't have the same temperament as the uh, toy dog, but they have another purpose and we have to respect that. Aggressive or overly shy behavior must never be tolerated during breed and judging and res should result in a disqualification. Bad dog. And this poor dog is really afraid. But not of me. Abundant coat and grooming is the next capital. The coat should not be abundant as to impede movement or its ability to see. Do you think this dog can move when it's from the table? It's not possible. And this is my dog. And she cannot see anything when she is in the main ring. I will change. Presentation of a dog. Uh, it's more and more that dogs coming into the main, in, into the ring and into the breed ring with a leash, uh, not loose. And uh, sometimes they cannot even put their feet, their front feet on the ground because they are so tied up. For example, like this one, you can see exactly where the leash is. Or this duck sound nearly didn't, couldn't breathe. And was lifted in front to, be, to show a better movement, what is not possible. A dog should, should be shown on a loose leash in a natural way with a correct and correct and breed specific, uh, specific movement. Pulling the dog up at the neck or tail is prohibited. These are the regulations and, every, and they are mandatory for all judges. This is it way it could look. And this is a no-go. And this as well. I know Terrier people didn't like when we implemented uh, uh, in the uh, uh, regulations that dogs should not be picked up on the tail and the head. They didn't like it. There was a big discussion. But for visitors, it looks like cruelty. It is, we cannot show that in now, nowadays. And uh, m maybe, I'm not a terrier breeder, I'm not a terrier owner. Maybe they don't feel it so much, but my old English sheepdog would feel it for sure. Next thing is that it is forbidden to put any substance uh, to change uh, the structure and co or color or form of the coat, skin or nose.
But this is what we see at every single uh, dog show. Spray, powder, water, special liquid. There are firms which really make a lot of money with it. And here you can see, I know the dog, I know the owner, I know the spray. This is hair spray to give a better glance on the, on the coat. Was made in Switzerland. All these official regulations deal ex exclusively with the health and welfare of dogs at shows. Oh, too quick. We just have to remember them and act accordingly. But I would like to show you something else as well. The following pictures can be seen quite often at dog shows by visitors and dog lovers. And of course, as well by activists whom we give the reason to take action against our hobby. Can you see in this little cage one, two, three, four dogs. It was in the middle of the summer and they had no shade and they even have this uh, shawl to prevent uh, the ears to being uh, dirty. Was as well in Switzerland. And this is a picture I showed you already yesterday uh, these uh, Siberian husky who cannot sit or turn around because the boxes are too small. In Switzerland now we have the law and it is a law and it did not come only from the Kennel Club that all cages have to be so big that a single dog, they, they are for, single, for one dog, uh, that the dog can stand, can turn, can move and can stretch. That means that for a toy dog, you need this size. Really big size. And for the uh, Great Danes, they come now with uh, these uh, uh, cages out of cover, covers and uh, they open uh, the roof that the dog can stand out and they are not allowed to close it. And we have also the law, but that is uh, very difficult to check, that uh, puppy buyers are not allowed anymore to put their puppy more longer than five minutes in a box. That means that gives a lot of pee during the night when a, when a puppy arrives at home. But officially, they are not allowed, no one is allowed to close a box. That is a big, bit exaggerated as well. Spike collar are not allowed in most of Europe, European countries. I don't, I don't know how it is here, but I made this uh, picture by myself in Europe, in a country where it is forbidden. The spikes are out. But when you have this, you, it's very quickly you put it, the spikes in. What do you think that a normal dog lover is supposed to think when he sees this picture? It's not understandable for, your, for normal dog lovers. Or this one. Also in Switzerland and in Germany and in Austria, to wrapping up the coat is not allowed at dog shows. What they do at home is another thing. This is what, not exhibitors, but what uh, people who are coming to dog shows to see nice dogs, what they hope to see. Beautiful dogs, relaxed and healthy.
no powder, no spray, no problem. I uh, told you already yesterday, but uh, I did this advert maybe 20 years ago, and now you can see it a lot in Austria as well and in Germany, and lots of breed clubs copied it because at least we remind the people what is the rule. Trimming table with a gallow are not allowed in many countries in Europe anymore. These are, this is a fake picture because I couldn't find one on a, on a gallow, but this one is made three, four weeks ago. So uh, these people didn't, didn't follow our rules, let's say like that. Welfare and health at international dog shows is not just a headline. We, the experts, the breeders, the judges, the people responsible for healthy keeping, keeping of dogs must always be aware that we, are, we have a great responsibility uh, against our beloved dogs. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Any questions? Hi, uh, congrats, first of all. <laughs> um, I have a doubt. Mm, what happened to the dogs that have undergone surgery for conformation problems like soft palate, stenotic nostrils, that keeps mating, that keeps um, being popular sire, popular dam, but look healthy now. But at the end, they are still spreading bad traced bad genes. Yes, what, that can is we, very, what can we do? That is a very good question. Uh, my problem as a judge is when this operation is done in a good time before the dog is shown, it's very difficult to see it. But I can tell you, I have had a dog in my ring where I could see the stitches. And because uh, the, the vet uh, who did uh, the stitches took a file in blue color and the blue color stitched out. <laughs> So that was, but that, that normally that doesn't happen. If somebody does that with a very nice dog, they know how long they don't have to go to dog shows. So it is not be seen. But we cannot, what we cannot see, we cannot disqualify. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mueller. Um, you mentioned about the f five or 10 minutes that puppy buyers can leave a dog in a crate. Um, is that um, part of the um, animal welfare uh, regulation? Uh, because in Australia, it's actually encouraged that we train our dogs, our puppies to actually crate train by the RSPCA. Yes, uh, in Switzerland, it is a law made by the government and uh, it came from the Animal Health and Welfare Organization. But uh, I, know, I, know, I know the problem. That's why I said there will be maybe a lot of pee uh, when, you in, when you stand up in the morning and the puppy uh, has not been in the crate. But officially, it is forbidden in Switzerland. I want to thank the FCI board members for giving Mexico the opportunity of having this important World Congress for Welfare and Health for the dogs worldwide. We are really pleased and thank you so much for giving us this great opportunity. And also I want to thank all the speakers from all over the world who participate in this great event. Thank you.